don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. Christmas, there is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I don't need to hang my stocking there upon the fireplace. Santa Claus won't make me happy with a toy on Christmas Day. I just want you for my own, more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. North Pole for St. Nick I'm just gonna keep on waiting for those magic reindeer clicks I just want you here tonight holding on to me so tight make my wish come true We were going to do the Mariah version, but seeing as to how that was live and I completely flubbed the words anyway, it kind of was almost on the same level. Thank you, Ed. Hey, welcome, you guys. Happy holidays. How's everybody feeling out there? Good? All right. Welcome, welcome. So I have um, just a quick, funny story that I wanted to share. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I know now that we're like in Christmas mode, it seems like, you know, Thanksgiving was actually just like two weeks ago, right? Um, I went down to Georgia. I was uh, visiting my grandparents. They live in an independent living uh, building. So they're independent, you know, but they can go downstairs. There's a vine wine bar. There's a, you know, a kitchen. They can go down for meals and everything like that. And uh, it was actually kind of nice. They had movies playing every night. I mean, I feel like a kind of like a place I would want to live. Um, but they were having a birthday celebration for all of the um, people that were born in November. And my grandfather was born in November. And it was really nice. They had um, a guitar. No, no, no. They had a keyboard player and a drummer come. And the, and the drummer, he also played the trumpet. And he was singing and doing all these old-time songs like Louis Armstrong and everything like that. And um, they actually were very nice enough to let me come up and sing a song because it's very rare that my grandparents get to hear me live um, or get to hear it all. So, um, sorry, <laughs> they didn't hear that anyway. So, um, after I sang, I sang Etta James at last, which I thought was very appropriate for the older than me people there. 
Um, it was great, everybody was coming up. I mean, it was like really great ego boost. And as we were going upstairs later, my mom said to me, she's like, oh my God, I think this is, you know, you should totally be doing this. And I was like, yeah, you know, thanks mom. You're right, I've been totally missing my target audience, people who can't hear. I know, right? So um, maybe, uh, maybe Mariah, maybe you, that would be something for you. No, I shouldn't take that dig because I just flubbed up the words on her song anyway. But um, thank you all for being here. We have a fabulous show for you guys tonight. Um, before I introduce our first musician, I just want to say one thing, um, how I met Michael. So um, there's a yoga studio in the neighborhood, and you know I was doing my yoga. I go down there, and I had never taken his class before, and I... So yeah, I went in, just got in his class, and I was sitting right in the front because I'm like a really good student. Um, and uh, he was taking us through like these meditations at the beginning of the class. And I was sitting there kind of like in my, you know, Indian, sitting Indian style and kind of like sitting on a block or, or a blanket or something kind of leaning up. And I kept leaning up and leaning up because I'm like, oh my God. Are we gonna stretch? Like, what's going on here? It's taking so long. And I was kind of, there's a, in Brooklyn, you guys wouldn't know this, but there's a, the clock, uh, no, the Williamsburg Savings Bank building. It has a clock on the top. It used to be called the Dental Mental Building uh, for those who were here a long time ago. Anyway, I kept like ambling up because I was like, oh my God, how long is this class? I really want to like stretch all this stuff out. And he called me out and he was like, yeah, I see you looking at the time. Like, don't worry, we're gonna get to stretching and everything. And um, I was really embarrassed and I actually, after that, well, it was like the, one of the best yoga classes I ever did take because I felt it really throughout my whole body. I'm not just saying that, it was amazing. Um, but then I was like, you know, we really do need to like slow down. And this is like the perfect time of year for that message. Like, we need to slow down take a breath, <laughs> we, don't have to, we can stop rushing for a few minutes, and like really reflect. And so um, that was one very important thing I learned. And then a couple of weeks later, I learned that he was a musician, and uh, very excited. So let me tell you a little bit about Michael. He is a Brooklyn-based uh, DJ, composer, and guitarista, who is a graduate of Berklee School of Music, a video instructor, and blogger for Guitar World magazine. He tours internationally, as well as composes for dance, TV, and film. He has over 30 years um, experience on guitar and he is fluid on acoustic, electric, and dance music genres. He also founded the Sarva Yoga Academy in 2009 that offers transformational education, teacher training, and retreats. So, please put your hands together and welcome Michael Hewitt. All right, thank you. Um, this is a piece for Africa.
looks like a full moon hangover, oh, yeah. but I can feel it. <laughs> so you brought the strength. Which is bad news because Joni Mitchell is a huge influence on me, and that goddess of the guitar uses a lot of different tunings, as do I. So this song is, um, the last one is an original. Actually, all of them are originals. Uh, this one's called Capricorn. And uh, it's kind of like if Joni Mitchell and Prince made a baby, that was, was the idea. It's, Prince is uh, hugely influenced by Joni. And it's sweet. I just, this is a sweet one, so.
and the last week and just had to step away a little bit. It's like we have stepped back several hundred years. Exhale it out, you know. I don't know if you guys can hear this. I, I have like sounds and stuff. Maybe you can hear it out there. Does it sound like you have tremolo on that? Oh, that's great. That's okay. It's good. It's all for you.
All right, so we take this part because we like to get to know all the artists that come on our show. We like to see, you know, what makes their brain tick because, as we know, artists, we're, like, way smarter than everyone, right? No. Mm -hmm. We're uh, it's just, we <laughs> maybe have a different way of looking at things than everybody else, so we just like to, do, you know, get into their mind and see how it ticks. So these aren't hard. You couldn't have prepared for this before you came here. Don't be nervous. But one of the questions I'm curious, so how did you get into playing guitar? Like, what took you down that path? No, not the double, but like, you know, what got you going down that way? Uh, it was like hit, being hit by lightning, actually. I, I was 10 years old, and it was a family reunion in Florida, and I would played other instruments, but I, I wasn't really passionate about music. I just thought it was neat, but when I had a guitar in my lap, the, it wasn't the first time, but something happened where I understood everything. Wow. Not saying I understand the instrument completely, but I just I saw the potential that could I could do with it in, in my lifetime, and uh, then I just kept pursuing it. And I had a lot of support from my parents. They provided Extremely lots of instruments. Important. That's amazing. Good teachers and uh, a university education, even. That's wonderful. So was the guitar the first instrument? Like you, you said, you played other instruments. What was the first instrument you played? Yeah, uh, I don't have to talk about this. Uh, Recorder! <laughs> Come on. Yes, yeah, see, look at that. It spans generations. I had uh, clarinet was my first instrument. Oh, wow. And it was, I felt so geeky, you know, like, it's like a little doctor's office bag, you know, like walking to school and I got this face, you know, as a kid, it's like <laughs> I, total weirdo. And uh, I hated it. Uh, and then I, I learned piano and that was interesting but still didn't scratch the itch, but I liked the orchestral aspect. Sure. But it wasn't until I found this that I had my voice. Right. But now, full circle, um, especially with DJing, I like that I can compose on the guitar, but now I'll arrange for a much, for totally different genre, different instruments sure. that don't even have guitar now. So. so I was just at his house the other day. He has like 50 guitars. Or 50 is an exaggeration, but he did, you have like, you have a lot of guitars. I like guitars. A lot of guitars. So what, do you have a favorite? I mean, do you like acoustic? Do you like your nylon string? Do you like electric? Like, do you have a favorite? Mm, no, they're like paints, you know? Like, you right. need a full spectrum of this, colors. Or you're doing The last this two years, it's, this has been the favorite, just because it's, um, it, there's no hiding. It's like the gym. Sure. It, and I started studying flamenco in the last two years, so... <laughs> Getting my right hand together required a, a nylon string. So I think I sent another episode in 2015 here. <laughs> Going that way. Nice. So we have a couple questions for you. Don't be nervous. These are great. Pick a number, 1 through 18. It has to be a whole number? Please. <laughs> okay, 3. Oh, I wish you'd pick 3.12345. Next time you can pick pi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jinx. What things did you have to let go of or leave behind in order to take the leap? Doubt. Mm. That's a heavy one. I think we're all like. And that's a cons that's a that. consistent like psychic weight lifting. I, if I had nickel for every time I doubted myself, I I would not be a musician. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would be like a. Uh, hedge fund manager or something. I, I, I feel like doubt is my, doubt and pride, actually. Let me add that too, doubt and pride. Mm. What if you fuck up in front of everyone? Like I just did at the beginning. Yeah, but you know what? But You're, life goes on. You showed up. You're here. It's, that's the most right. important thing. Half of life is showing up on time. You will get far, trust me. Yeah, I like that. Doubt and pride, those are definitely things I can like steer you away from what you're trying to do if enough times you know you fall into that pattern would you like to pick another number five five do you have someone you consider a mentor absolutely how did you meet them I had more mentors than fingers and toes um, that's amazing it's a blessing a particular mentor uh, I thought about him I heard that he was in retreat for years by himself and my yoga teachers were going there to give him uh, ways of not going insane in, so, in a solitary retreat. You know, you have to do something physical, otherwise you get cabin fever, you get stir, cra stir crazy. Your own heightened energy turns against you, so you have to have a way of rechanneling it. And I could almost point to the 
hexagonal cobblestone I was standing mm -hmm. on in Union Square when I thought about him. Like, what a thing to go and face yourself for almost four years in solitude, heavily armed with some incredible liturgies from uh, Tibet and pre-Tibet. Uh, and then after he got out, I met him. That's amazing. And he was my teacher for many years. He still is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Um, so we have one more. So these are a little different. These are questions that I came up with on my own. So it is 1 through 13. Oh, 1 through 13? Mm -hmm. i got to pick 13. Okay, if you were a spice, what would you be? Not a spice girl, but if you were a spice. I, I beg you guys, come on. It's, a, it's an obvious <laughs> question. Uh, I think I would be sage. Ooh, that's a good one. Put him on my chicken. Just kidding, I know he's chicken anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Perfect, you guys. Michael here, he's got CDs over here for sale. And also, you can check out uh, Michael online at michaelhewitt.bandcamp.com. And that's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-H-E-W-E-T-T dot bandcamp dot com. And also, he's a SoundCloud page because he's also a very dope DJ. Um, SoundCloud.com slash uh, M. Hewitt. So be sure to check him out. So stick around because he's coming back to play another set um, in our second half. So thank you. Thank you. Good, have a seat, drink some wine. All right, I'm just gonna take a moment now before we bring up our next guest. Um, Fortunately, we don't have another episode uh, story in the series of how to get out of your family's will, because luckily it was a pretty tame week. And um, <laughs> thank you. But um, we do have a little segment that I like to call edit kit, or if you say it really fast, etiquette. Um, so like, I just want to like follow up because what he was saying is that the blues is like a really good way to like, you know, a cathartic release of all things. Well, doing comedy is a really good way to call out your friends when they're doing really fucked up things and kind of make it kind of funny. So um, I'm spreading good cheer by good etiquette because my mom raised me right. Sometimes I might falter from that, but wow, that's great. If that car could just stay right there. Hello. I'm blind. Um, but this week, we would like to talk about when you're traveling and you have friends. Maybe you're going to another country and you have friends that are putting you up and uh, you show up, but you show up with someone else. That is fucked up. You should always, always, when you are going somewhere and you have a host, it is the right thing to do to always let them know that if you are traveling alone, which they probably assume they are, that you are because that's when they agreed to put you up, if you show up with someone else, that ain't cool. So I'm just putting that out in the universe. These are real situations that people come to me and I choose to make public on my own, my own fruition here, right? Um, so that's just the edit kit for the day. And you can also follow Etiquette Girl on Twitter.com. So... Without further ado, we have a very, very, very funny lady coming up. You guys are in store for a wonderful performer. Um, actually, a little fact about Carolyn. She, I first met her when she performed on my bed. Not in my bed, on my bed. So you guys take that wherever you like. Anyway, we are um, very excited to welcome her back. Um, she is a former Philadelphian, now a resident of Brooklyn. Yo, woo, let's hear it for Brooklyn. Um, you may not know her from Conan, or Late Night, or Saturday Night Live, or Famous Web Series, but she's working on it, as are we all. She's performed at the Bridgetown Comedy Festival in Portland, Oregon, as well as the Boston Comedy Festival, and She Double Comedy Fest here in New York City. Um, she also has a very, very funny monthly show at over the eight in Williamsburg, it is the first Monday of the month, second Monday, sorry, the second Monday of the month, and guess what? That is tomorrow, so go check her out. So anyway, let's give it up for the very lovely Carolyn Busa. Hi. Hi. I've never performed in a fancy mic like this, but by God it, we're gone, damn, we're gonna do it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Doing this six years, don't know how to use a mic. 
Uh, you guys are quiet, and that's okay. We're going to get you laughing. <laughs> uh, move over, he says. Um, what I'm curious about etiquette, what if you show up with a really cute French bulldog? That's my dog. <laughs> Would that be allowed? What do we think? Yeah. yeah. You have to know this about me. If I'm constantly thinking about my dog like all the time. I don't know if you guys have kids or pets, but there's not a moment of the day where I couldn't cry just thinking about my dog. <laughs> He's adorable. Anyway, I did... Um, moved to New York about uh, almost, I got about a year ago. And I'm assuming you guys all live here yourself. And New York is great. It is. Everyone's nice, you know. Everyone's always giving me their mixtapes. I'm like, oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, I, uh, I can't believe we're coming up on uh, 2015, which seems crazy to me. Doesn't it seem like just yesterday Titanic was two VHS tapes, right? Where does the time go? <laughs> I had to put so many troll dolls out on the street when I brought that movie home. It was gigantic. <laughs> had to move out into the garage when my dad brought home the Godfather box set. <laughs> Pacino in, you're out, kid. <laughs> it's okay. I do love, the love living here, although I did have my first crazy person experience, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the only way I know how to deal with a crazy person experience is to tell everyone about it, so please excuse me. Um, I'm from a small town, that's what we like to do, create awareness, make t-shirts, that sort of thing. Um, I was on the train, and, and this woman told me that I was an ugly white bitch who was never going to find love. <laughs> I felt like I was trapped in the comments section of a YouTube video. <laughs> it's like, how did we get here? Um, living in New York is kind of like living in the first two minutes of every crime show on TV, <laughs> like before the theme song, right? What's about to go terribly wrong? <laughs> like another time I was on the train and this guy was whistling the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Never been more scared in my life. <laughs> like anywhere else, that guy would have been on the six o'clock news as a hometown hero, you know? <laughs> Local man, late for work, but he still loves America. Tonight at six. <laughs> but like, who whistles their country's anthem on the two train? <laughs> he was a terrorist, right? <laughs> terrorist. Oh my gosh. Um, I live in a. I live in a good neighborhood, but my, my building is kind of shitty. Um, I don't know, have you guys ever lived somewhere shitty that when you're showing people where you live, you have to keep following it up with like fun facts about the neighborhood? <laughs> I'm like, hey guys, welcome to my place. Just watch out for the scary lady blocking the entrance. <laughs> She's just excited because we have 12 restaurants within walking distance. <laughs> Don't mind the drug dealers in the lobby because there's a museum two blocks away. <laughs> and come inside, you're going to want to get pictures of the cat hotel outside my window. <laughs> I made multiple noise complaints, not realizing it was just cats and heat outside my window. Uh, if you're not used to that noise, it'll wake you from your deepest nightmare. You can hear it in your bones. <laughs> um, the guys in the building, they're nice. They are, but sometimes they can be a little too nice, you know? Like the other night I came home and this one guy was like, hey, what's up? And I was like, I said no, <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is my body, <laughs> My rules. But, um, I always catch them in the lobby smoking weed. They get scared, like, oh, I'm sorry, miss. We're good people, we just love smoking weed. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I get that, get you. I Smoke weed sometimes myself too, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, let's blaze, right? Hit my teeth. It's 420 somewhere, right? <laughs> I don't do drugs. Um, <laughs> I still get scared when I see people rolling their cigarettes. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Start blushing. Over the summer, though, it was fun. The, the neighborhood kids would play basketball right outside the apartment, which was good because it forced me to start wearing lipstick again. Uh, 
I mean, they weren't wearing shirts, guys, come on. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of sexual energy to hit you in the face every morning. Your female instinct just kicks in sometimes. <laughs> I'd watch their games a lot. Um, one time I was watching their game, and they were taking a break. So I was reapplying, and um, <laughs> this one guy told me that I looked like a 90-year-old woman putting on lipstick. <laughs> Not a compliment. <laughs> I wish I thought of a good comeback, but I was too busy blotting. Okay, who has a Werther's? All right. <laughs> I swear I'm sexy under all this vintage, guys. <laughs> Beneath all these clothes, there are boobs, and they're not crocheted, they're real. <laughs> I think my boyfriend was actually surprised the first time he saw me naked and saw that my skin wasn't a 1940s floral pattern. <laughs> Although my belly button is an owl. It's really cute. Um, I think I could be a model, right? Okay. Yeah, I got the legs of like American Apparel model. And <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, like hair, like yeah. Pantene, right? <laughs> it's just too bad I have the soul of a Sears catalog. <laughs> uh, just think of my style as your parents' kitchen before they remodeled. <laughs> I'm like the giant green Frigidaire of fashion. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's nice, it serves its purpose, but we should just gut the thing. All right. <laughs> Get rid of it. Uh... No, people, people tell me a lot. They're like, Carolyn, you look like a sexy librarian. <laughs> like, they tell me so much that I'm starting to feel like a sexy librarian. <laughs> no, no, don't laugh. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty hot. <laughs> I can play the part of a sexy librarian until it comes to anything book or sexy related. <laughs> I'm just a Halloween costume that bleeds. <laughs> this is all Velcro. <laughs> uh, I want to I wanna toughen my image. I'm trying. You know? Like, drink risky, F-bombs, anal, I don't know. <laughs> like, you wouldn't know it, but I grew up uh, next to Camden, New Jersey, you know? Hardcore? Yeah. Besides the fact that I lock my doors really fast, that's it. Nothing rubbed off on me. Um, I just, I just want a bad reputation that doesn't involve overdue library books. <laughs> I'm trying. I do this thing, but I don't know if you guys. Do, I do this thing at bars where I pick the label off my beer bottle. Anyone do that? And I was doing it the other night, and the bartender tells me, he's like, you know, that means you're sexually frustrated. I was like, dude, you don't even know me, okay? These are for my scrapbook. <laughs> what are you going to tell me next? I have lipstick on my teeth? Because, yeah, I know. It's called being a feminist. <laughs> huge feminist, guys. Huge. Right? Ladies. <laughs> See how high my voice went? That's how serious I am. Right? Like Spice Girls. That's a thing. Right? <laughs> Like, these boots are made for walking, bitch. <laughs> I don't know what a feminist is. <laughs> Beyonce. Beyonce? No. I, I mean, does she eat Luna bars every day? Because I do. <laughs> does that count? I've been eating them a while now. Actually, I don't even get my period anymore. <laughs> I think it's starting to work. <laughs> I miss it. Isn't that stupid? Like, all my friends are synced up. I'm jealous. You know, I got nothing to talk about with them. <laughs> Is anyone here menstruating? I'd love to talk to you after the show. <laughs> Especially if you have cramps. Okay, I'm a female comedian. I'll talk to a parked car about my cramps. <laughs> I'm just dying to talk box. All right, that's... <laughs> No one wants to bring box back, but I'm trying. Um, I don't know how to end this. Uh, after we go from box, um, I'll just say uh, my boyfriend and I, we've been together four years now. Yeah. It's 
a long time. We're actually at that point in our relationship where it's like, when are we going to start seeing other people? <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Carolyn. Thanks. <laughs> We can definitely talk next week because I'm supposed to get my period. Supposed. Oh, good. Just kidding. I'm getting it, Mom. Don't worry. Oh. You already got two other grandkids on the way. I'm not going to be a surprise one. Here we go. <laughs> so when did you first figure out you were funny? Uh, mm, probably like college when I was my roommate, who is not like me at all, was like, hmm, you're funny, Carolyn. <laughs> nice. I was just being myself, but they... Mm, I thought I was being quirky. And I was like, oh, I guess I could go with it. Nice. <laughs> so where do you get your inspiration? Just from things that happen? Yeah, I think I'm realizing most of my comedy is just uh, me, <laughs> uh, which I think there's aspects of it that people can relate to, but I just pull a lot of it um, from myself, whether that's good or bad or uh, kind of limits me. We'll see. <laughs> I can relate. I can relate. So we have some questions for you. Don't yeah. get nervous. No. We're going to start with 1 through 18. Um, my dog just turned 4, so 4. 4 is a good one. Were there any books that inspired you or individual people that inspired you? Uh, I'm actually reading a book right now called Poking a Dead Frog, and it's interviews with, uh, this guy did a bunch of interviews with comedians and writers and you know old sitcom writers and late-night writers and just all sorts of comedy writers, and it really opened... My eyes to the work that's yet to be done, but just it was really inspiring seeing the work that people put into their careers. Do you have a favorite comedian? Uh, I Male should. Male or female, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm really into... Uh, it can change. I yeah, know, it does know, change for times. me, I think. Um, I think Bill Burr currently. Um, I don't know if you guys like or know him, but... Uh, he has a great podcast and where he's just himself, and so I kind of like that part of that. Nice. So, yeah. Being yourself is always the way to go. <laughs> yeah. I know I have a lot of people that are like, oh, my God, you're so funny. I'm, that story is hilarious. Like, you know, you fell into the Venice Canal. I'm like, yes, these are, this is my life. <laughs> so, you when know. When did that happen? Oh, that happened <laughs> in September. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was a good one. I have the bruise to show it, but you know what? I'll show you later. Um, in the bedroom again. All right. That's right. <laughs> That's the late night show, you guys. <laughs> um, pick another number. Uh, can't reuse, I wouldn't say. Ten. Ten. I knew, I felt like you were oh. going to say ten. That's so weird. Lipstick brings us together. It does. What is the least creative part of your creative life? The least creative part? Um, I don't know if this would count, but Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's fun. No, I would say like having to do the business side of all of the creative things that we do as like independent artists. Yeah, and it's just become so much bigger over the, you know, I find myself thinking in tweets and I'm like, this is <laughs> stupid. But, uh, you know, Twitter's really made some careers. So, you know, there's you're always crossing your fingers. I know, you're like, this is stupid. There's a place for that. It's yeah. called Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I feel stupid when I'm like spending my time crafting a tweet. Um, so that's. Yeah. It takes kind of a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, you only get 140 characters. You're really limited. Yeah, my process is uh, do it on Twitter, and then uh, you can expand a little more on Facebook and right, you know course. see which one works. Goodbye vowels. <laughs> <laughs> and spelling. <laughs> and spelling, I know, right? We all seem a little um, <clears throat> abbreviated on Twitter. All right, these are my questions okay. now. These are the super hard ones. Pick a number, 1 through 13. Uh, 12. That's a great one. What's your favorite snack? <gasps> guys, um, oh, that's tough. What would you guys? Shout it out. <laughs> Luna bars. Peanut butter no. poppers. Oh, no. they're good. They haven't um, been around since the 80s, but I wish they would bring them back if anyone's listening. Uh, I'm digging this is like mix I do of wasabi peas and green tea ice cream. You put them together, and really? it's, it's the hotness and the coolness of the ice cream. It's really, it's a summertime treat, so like wait a few months, um, but hey, try it out. I don't want to steer you off that, but I was at a UFC fight party last <laughs> night. And Gotta they see had, how this relates. <laughs> it relates completely. Um, they had a bowl of wasabi soy almonds out. Ooh. 
So good. Yeah. I'm all done with the wasabi. Nice. So, you guys, check Carolyn's show out at Over the Eight in Williamsburg. Second Monday of the month. It's very funny. I have been. So, can you... You're doing another set for us. Um, what do you guys think? Yes, we I'll want to. Like, I'll do, like, five minutes. I don't want to... We're not timing you. You could do whatever you want. You guys just need to smile more so I'm not intimidated. Um, it's the holidays, you guys. Come on. Okay, it'll be it'll be easy. All right. All right. This is oops, this sorry. is like my favorite kind of show, though. It's great. Um, <laughs> I was gonna see if I could bring my bed back in here, maybe you know, make it feel more at home. Yeah, yeah. This is a great place. We're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh my God! So I'll just I'll talk about my boyfriend. I really good. Uh, he's divorced. Thank you. Um, uh, and it's it's really tough dating a, a divorced guy because especially him because his ex-wife is still alive. <laughs> and that sucks. <laughs> um, the worst part is is her name is Karen which is like the Starbucks version of my name, right? Yeah. Like when we first started dating, I would make sure his friends like really enunciate it when they were saying hi to me. They'd be like, hey, Carolyn. I'd be like, whoa, whoa, slow down, okay? Let's try that again. That's Carolyn with a C, as in cooler than Nick's ex-wife. All right. Um, but I, didn't, I ran into her recently, and um, she was like, oh, hey, Carolyn, how's Nick? What a bitch, right? I was like, he's great. He's inside me a lot. Like, get off his dick already. Jesus. Um, but I didn't realize how crazy I could be as a girlfriend until there was an ex-wife in the picture, right? Like, oh, big deal. We all might read our boyfriend's text messages sometimes. No? All right. Um, but, like, that's nothing, okay? Try going through his things looking for his wedding photos, right? finding them, and then crying hysterically for hours, and then blaming him for the whole thing. I was like, you wanted me to find these in the basement, in a box, in a box, in a box. We're working through it. Um, but we're not one of those weird couples. Like, I find like the more times a couple calls each other babe, the shittier the relationship. <laughs> like I used to know this babe couple and they fought all the time. It sounded like a 60s doo-wop jingle. It was like, babe, 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 fuck you. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I, uh, people are like, Carolyn, you're so old fashioned. I bet you don't even watch porn. And I'm like, no, I don't watch porn, thank you. I critique erotica. <laughs> of course I watch porn, guys, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, the porn I do watch is considered couple-friendly porn. If you guys seen this, it's great. It's like, there's eye contact, there's real emotions. But at the end of the day, guys, porn is porn, and so is a back tattoo. <laughs> Should really airbrush that out. Put it in the budget, you know, they got HD, geez. Um, but I, I'm on the go a lot, so I kind of wish there was more, like I just like to listen to porn instead of just watch, like some sort of porn podcast might be nice, right? <laughs> Think about it, guys, next, next month. Um, because like the act of sex, emotionally, I get it, it's beautiful, it is. Um, visually, <laughs> it's disgusting, <laughs> I mean, let's take, for instance, uh, the male organ, right? Um, the penis. Uh, <laughs> it's jarring, right? There's a lot going on down there. It's, it's like a root vegetable, right? You know? It's like you look at it, and you can almost taste it. Right? It's like it's medicinal, you know, like it just kind of lingers. I know you guys aren't with me yet. It's like, it's like a, a college textbook, the penis. You know, you're like, mm, that looks a little more than gently used to me. <laughs> like, 
I think I'll wing it this semester. <laughs> oh my God, okay, I'll get out of here. Um, I, uh... Tell me what age does the I'm lost on a class trip feeling go away? <laughs> Tell me it's 30, please, because um, I don't know who I am or where I'm going. Someone take my hand, please. Um, like just, I don't know how to deal with my time. I thought my life was going really well until I went bowling recently. <laughs> yeah, there's something about watching your ball go down the gutter at five miles an hour. <laughs> you start to reevaluate all your life choices. Because bowling's not a sport where if you're not good at one part of it, like you're good at the other. You know, it's not like, yeah, I can't hit the pins, but I made cool nicknames on the scoreboard. You know, it doesn't work that way. But like, should, yeah. Because yeah, sure. like with every slow rotation of the ball, I was just getting angrier and angrier at myself and everything I ever failed at came <laughs> rushing back towards me. I was like, here we go. Mm. God, Carolyn, you haven't read a complete book in over a year. <laughs> the Hunger Games has been sitting on your nightstand for six months. Six months, you don't even own a pair of shoes that last six months, Carolyn, yet you continue to shop at Payless and wonder why you have blisters on your heels. You're pathetic, Carolyn. You're 29, you can't afford new shoes, you can't roll a freaking bowling ball. Oh, and hey, Carolyn, when are you gonna buy apples and actually eat them, okay? <laughs> Stop pretending you like fruit. You know they just make your lips itch. You're just <laughs> jealous. You're jealous of people that actually enjoy things that are good for them, like those people that get tomato juice out for breakfast. What the fuck is that about, you know? They sit there and they drink it out of their cute little glass and then they put pepper on it and you're like, well, I like pepper, so you get a glass of tomato juice and you put pepper on it just like they did and now you're out to breakfast with a glass of tomato juice you can't swallow a side of apples you're pretending to like, bloody band-aids on your heels and itchy lips, all because your bowling scores remain the same since you were five years old. You suck, Sea Dog 69. <laughs> Guys, thanks. I'm Carolyn. <laughs>
But um, I also just want to take a minute. Um, you can always find us online at MsStephaniesHouse.com. There's a picture reference for you in the window. Um, we would like to thank Alia Fibes for the wonderful logo that we have. Um, as, as always, I want to thank Micah and Ed and Sean for all the hard work that they put in. And when you are tweeting or doing anything live with us, Ms. Stephanie's House Live is our hashtag. So, without further ado, I would like to welcome Michael back up to the stage to do a couple more songs for us.
you think? Is there another one? Or are we? Yes, please. Yes. Another one. Oh, yes, please. Wow. Please okay. Thank you. Um, so everything I've played up till now has been original. Uh, this is just old. I, I don't know who wrote it. Um, actually, that's not true. Paco de Lucia is responsible for the beginning of it, and then it blends into some very old falsettas, which are pieces of music that come from uh, gypsy cultures that migrated to different areas. And so as you get to know their music, uh, you can start to put together a picture. So uh, I'm, I'm mixing and match matching from different times and different places. Um, I'll do my best.
songs in a row so much like the opera please hold your applause till the very very end all right i'm gonna start with that song stockings, but I'm not going to let that affect me. The show must go on. I'm a pro.
they put all the stones in their place I've eaten the sun so my tongue has burned of the taste I have been guilty of kicking myself in the teeth I will speak no more of my energy Down in a hole, yeah, yeah Feeling so small Down in a hole Losing my soul I'd like to fly But my wings have been so denied Who knows what band that was? Anybody, anybody? I think you know, yes, hell yes! I have to just say that when, now I know you guys, you see me glancing at lyrics and everything, sometimes we don't decide what songs we're gonna do till the week of the show. And because we're all so busy here, it's really hard. But when I presented to Michael, sorry, I was like, hey, um, you're a really awesome guitar player. Um, do you happen to know like this, I threw a couple songs at him, from Alice in Chains, and he was like, that's my favorite song. So I knew, thank you. Yeah. So I knew that was gonna be <laughs> good. Of Hell yes. So you guys, check out Michael Hewitt online, um, SoundCloud M. Hewitt, and also check out Michael Hewitt on Bandcamp. And if you're not using Bandcamp, get on there, people. There's a lot of great bands. Thank you so much. Are you <laughs> And also check out the Sarva Yoga Academy. I'm not, I was not lying when that was, when I said at Lucky Lotus, I'm going to give them a plug. But I went down there and that was one of the, that was like one of the best classes I ever took there. Even though I started out as a snarky little bitch, I was like, let's go. I got a schedule to keep to. He was like, uh-uh. So before we close tonight, I do want to say Sean Kershaw. Hello, our awesome sound man. He has a show tonight at Don Pedro's in Williamsburg at 9 p.m. So he is the master of rockabilly and rock and roll. So go check him out. So before we bid adieu to everybody, we want to thank you for coming out from Manhattan and London town. We're so glad that you're in town. And uh, you know, from Clifton over there, over on the other side of Clinton Hill, and yo, I'm not gonna yell out your address because that would be mine too, and that was our secret location. But thank you. Thank you, TNT. Thank you to my wonderful crew. Thank you to Carolyn Busa. Thank you to Michael Hewitt. Um, thank you to everybody that's tuning in and watching us. Um, we have some really stellar shows planned for 2015, so we hope that you uh, tune in. And also, as always, you can always go to MsStephanie'sHouse.com and we have full episodes there. So we're going into our third year in 2015. Isn't that crazy? You guys, this is like longer than any of my relationships have ever lasted. Oh my God, that's saying something, right? Um, but in 2015, we're gonna have ones that last longer than that, right, 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 right? The power of positive thinking. So, to close out this evening, I would like to call the birthday boy up here, Mr. Edgardo. So, you know, it's the holiday season. Um, you know, you guys are all getting ready for Santa to come to your house, right? Or uh, Hanukkah Harry, whichever. 
Or both. If you're like me, I'm like, why do I have to just be limited to one? What? Well, hot Harry is like the American version. Come on, you know the people here. They can't get it. Go get your smells of smear there, honey. All right, listen. So um, we have a nice little song that we wanted to do for you all tonight. Santa! Santa! Look, you guys, Santa's here! Awesome! Santa's back. Santa is back. I know Santa very well. I'm not going to tell you why. Um, but, um, hey, I grew up in the suburbs with a mall. Okay, no, but anyway, we want to do a little song for you guys. I think that wine, it's the same, it's the wine. It's not me. It's the wine. Um, so we take it away? The wine is good. The wine, well, let me just say again, thank you, everyone. Um, we love doing this. Thank you again, Michael and Carolyn, for coming out. Like, we have so much fun, so we thank you very much. And thank you to all of you, because without you guys, there's no point. And Grandma and Mom, I love you. All right, take it away. Santa baby, put a Fendi bag under the tree for me. I've been an awfully good girl, Santa baby, and hurry down the chimney tonight. Fendi, I thought I got you that last year. You remember that? Oh, yes. Santa baby, renew my city bike too. You know the one you got me last year? I rode it all over. You should get one till we could go together. Santa baby, and hurry down the chimney tonight. Do they make them a tandem? That's a great idea. Santa baby, there's one thing I really do need. A new lease on my apartment. You've been there, it's amazing, right? I wanna stay. I'm asking Santa baby, and hurry down the chimney tonight. Oh, Santa cutie, fill up my stocking with Metro cards galore. You know, unlimited so I can go everywhere I want. Please, please, that's all I need. Metro cards, unlimited. Fill up my stocking tonight. Mm -hmm. I thought we were using the city bikes. What if it rains? Come and trim my Christmas tree with some decorations bought locally. I really do believe in you. Let's see if you believe in me. But oop it do Santa, honey. Oh, I forgot to mention one little thing. A ring. No, 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 not an iPhone 6. I wouldn't make you stand that line. And hurry down my chimney tonight. Hurry down the chimney tonight. Hurry down the chimney tonight. Yeah. You got it? Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of the year. We'll see you in 2015.